How they hanging down, oh dudes? It's me, the Meteor Raptor, and welcome back to the Meteor Raptor Reviews. And the final episode of Jawsuary. Yep, it's been an interesting month. I lost my charger, couldn't record. Got my charger back, recorded some more, and here we are at the final review. And you guys, if you honestly didn't see this review coming, I don't know what to say. I'm kind of disappointed in you. <laughs> then again, I never really make a schedule of what I'm going to review. I just sort of decide, I'm going to review this now, or blah, blah, blah. I just kind of do things as I will. But when the month is called Jawsuary, and it's dedicated to shark movies, you really should have seen this coming. If you can't tell what I'm talking about, I am talking about the king of all shark movies, the 1975 classic Jaws. Dino Dudes, you have no idea how well this movie has held up for 43 years. Yeah, you guys want to feel old? This movie is 43 years old now. That's crazy. It... Now, yes, it looks 43 now, and to be honest, while well, some movies age like fine wine, some movies age like milk. What is Jaws? What's happened to Jaws? Well, let me tell you. Why am I shuffling a deck of cards right now? So, the plot. You probably... Now, as much as I'd love to say, it's like every other shark movie you've ever seen, with there being a shark that kills people and then them trying to kill it while trying to protect the beach. And, of course, then there's the mayor who doesn't want to shut the beach down because, oh, it, it makes the town money, and then they have to go out and kill the shark, and yada, yada, yada. As cliched as that sounds, as you've heard that in every single sci-fi channel movie, the idea of a shark showing up and them having to kill it, it was unheard of. It was practically unheard of until Jaws came along. And yes, I know Jaws is based off a book. I haven't read it yet. It's on my list of things to read, but don't have the time. See, one reason why I'm going to applaud this movie is because not only did it give us a very simple but powerful story about a bunch of people, about three dudes trying to take down a shark, it made all of them likable to the extreme. Uh, really, the story follows Sheriff Brody, who recently moved to Amityville, and things seem totally fine. Until a dead body shows up. Turns out, yeah, there may have been a shark. Do they immediately shut down the beach? No. Why? Because the mayor doesn't want to accept the fact that there's a shark, let alone shut down the beach when it's about to make them a ton of money because it'll be the big celebration weekend, the big festival. Now, there is an interesting fan theory, one which I kind of agree with. It's that maybe they've known all this time until Brody showed up. Maybe the past sheriffs have known. Maybe they've known there was a shark and the mayor knew, but chose not to do anything as they could easily write it off as being an accident or something because there was no proof of a shark. And think about it. When the bodies wash up, they take them, hide them, get rid of them, whatever they do. You have no proof that a shark did anything. It actually takes a scary idea of a true force of nature just doing what it does and really add some fear to it by adding that maybe, maybe it could have been stopped all those years ago, yet it wasn't. So we have Brody, who's a really nice guy. He's your average sheriff. He's, unlike most movie sheriffs though, he's not the jerk, he's not corrupt, he's just trying to do the right thing. Yeah, we've seen it before, but it works. We have... Shoot, I totally forgot the second guy's name. One sec. It's Hooper, I think. Yeah, I had that right. We have Hooper, who's a marine biologist. Uh, Brody calls him in because he's trying to figure out what the heck could this thing be. In fact, he's the one who first proposes it's most likely a shark, a great white shark, and we're all in danger. Then we get to Quint, who is hands down the best character in the movie, and one of my favorite characters in all of film. He is crude, but he's nice. He is self-centered, yet he works with people. And I will talk about how uh, Robert Shaw and the others kind of got along, because that's a story in and of itself. But Quint is such a likable character. He just seems like such a cool guy. Like, when you go into his cabin briefly, you see shark jaws, like the, like the mouth bones of all these different types of sharks and other large aquatic animals. He's been doing this for years, 
And it's really cool to watch a guy like that. And there have been so many characters across so many movies who have tried to be the Quint of their movie. Even Sandsharks are the character pretty much making fun of Quint by him being the crazy guy who... the crazy village drunk who knows how to kill these things. But, yeah. All of our characters are incredibly likable. Even the mayor, despite the fact that he never straight up shuts down the beach even though he should, after, uh... Spoiler here, even though the movie is 43 years old, after uh, Brody's son gets hurt, he at least comes forward and says, I made a mistake. Granted, it's kind of a too little too late, and it is pretty clear it's just him trying to make himself feel better, but at least it's something. They actually went that little bit to try and add something. Now, the story is 43 years old. The movie is over two hours, just over two hours. I'm going to be honest with you guys right now. Not everyone will like this movie, because the pacing is fantastic, yet it can also be the film's biggest problem. We all know the classic story of how they rarely show the shark. Not a lot of people know why. They just know that, oh, it's because the shark animatronic didn't work. The true story is, uh, George Lucas, Spielberg, and John Williams, they were hanging out at one point, goofing, like, and they were messing around with the animatronic. Lucas stuck his head in the shark's mouth when they turned it on. It got stuck there for about half an hour until they were finally able to get him out of there. And it's believed that's part of the reason why the animatronic didn't work. Secondly, when they put the animatronic in the water, it sunk to the bottom to where they had to get a whole team to go and get it out. Yeah, it was nicknamed the Great White Turd for a reason, as well as Bruce, named after his lawyer, which there's no connection between those two names, I believe. At least I'd hope. But... The animatronic didn't work, and so of course they had to improvise. They created the whole idea of never showing the creature fully until near the end. You see the fin, you see the top of the head briefly, and to some people, especially to me, it's fantastic. One of the best movies ever made, one of the best, well, best sci-fi movies ever made, and possibly one of the best horror movies ever made is Jaws, but also another one is Alien, which had a technique similar to this. You rarely see the creature until the, right near the end. Now, for some people who already know it's a shark, and after 43 years of sequels, sci-fi channel movies, Sharknado, Sand Sharks, Mega Shark, uh, Trailer Park Shark, yeah, that's a thing, Jersey Shore Shark Attack, I can understand why some people would be like, this movie's boring because you rarely ever get to see the shark. When you're so accustomed to bad shark movies where the sharks are jumping out of the water or they're walking around with like a or there's a mega sh like super shark where it's like jumping out of the water fighting a mecha tank, yeah, that's another thing. I understand why some people may kind of see this movie as mediocre, at least in the storytelling department. But what it does do, and this kind of has to do with the music, is it builds tension perfectly. It builds a character dilemma of what should what should you do? Should you keep the beach open and let more people die? Or should you close it and potentially ruin the town? Will you, like, will Brody do this one thing or will he do something else? He's, he's faced with relatable morals and actual questions which he has to try and deal with. And his actions do have consequences. As mentioned, he keeps the beaches open and his son nearly gets killed. It's not just, we're going to make one choice and that's it. Like, they constantly are going back and forth, trying to debate it, trying to figure out what's the better option for everyone. Not just, my son got hurt, therefore I say we shut it down. He's saying, look, my son got hurt, someone's died, more people are going to die. But at the same time, if we do that, the whole town will get shut down, people will lose their jobs, their home, their economy, everything. It's actually quite interesting. And when the shark does show up, it's genuinely tense and rather frightening the first few times. Granted, I've seen this movie more than once, so it doesn't really scare me, but it still provides a feeling of, oh, I know what's coming, this is pretty freaky, man. And especially if you haven't seen this movie and you're watching it with someone who has, they'll give you this look of, I know what's coming, and you'll be like, dude, please stop, I know it's a shark. But then the other person will be like, I know, but you don't know what's gonna happen. And since the movie is 43 years old, I don't feel I see any problem with giving spoilers out. They kill the shark. Obviously. Despite the fact that there's three sequels. Uh, the one thing which I don't like about the movie is the fact that they kill Quint. Yeah, they, they kill him at one point near the end. He dies before they blow it up. By the way, with one of the best one-liners I've ever heard in film history, to be honest. But... 
it sucks. It's not that I wish they... It's, it's not like... I, I don't even know how to explain it. It's just you like the character, so when he dies, you kind of know he's going to. Like, they kind of build it up. Then if anyone would, it would be him. But it still sucks watching him die. Especially because he's so likable. And a few scenes before, it seems like everything's going to be totally okay. In fact, it even seems like they kill Hooper at one point by a rather... A scene which still kind of gets to me with him going down in a diving cage and the shark tearing it open. That still kind of gets to me. Maybe it's because of my fear of being enclosed in like a small place like that, especially underwater, with a shark. Now granted, I'm not afraid of being underwater, I'm not afraid of being in small enclosed spaces, and I'm not afraid of sharks. On their own. Put them together, you kind of have a problem. But you can't blame me either. Uh, let's talk about the acting. 43 years, and the acting is still amazing. Uh, Robert Shaw as Roy Schneider, as I mentioned earlier, he plays a very likable character, but a character who you can tell both just by his by his facial expressions and by how he talks and how he acts. He's going through a pretty hard dilemma of what should he do. Uh, Richard Dreyfuss, I actually got to meet him last year at Fan Expo, who plays Hooper. He plays sort of the somewhat nerdy, kind of awkward, social, socially awkward kind of guy, who is super smart, though, and you would want the second there's any form of, form of creature like this. And then, Robert Shaw. This man is amazing. But I've heard the stories. I've heard how he was incredibly mean, he was rude, he was drunk, he fought with the other actors, he fought with Spielberg. And the amazing thing is, there's one scene in it, it is probably my favorite scene out of the entire movie, where Quint finally kind of just starts talking about how he was in the, I believe it was, Vietnam. Or maybe World War II. He was in a war or something. He was in the army. And he's talking... Or was it the Navy? Like, there's, you guys know the scene. He's talking about how they were attacked. And how... His friends were taken by sharks after they were stranded out in the ocean. Thing was, the, that, the, the, the shot... The, that scene. The day before they shot that, they tried to do it. It went horribly. He was kind of drunk and eventually... Everyone just kind of walked off, like, we can't work with him. That night, he called Spielberg, apologized, and asked to do it in a second to try again. That whole scene was done in one take. No reshoots, no nothing. They just had the cameras rolling. He did that whole speech in one take, and it is phenomenal. You are left speechless, and you are just left in amazement at how... This grizzled old, kind of drunk sailor, shark hunter goes from being just this whole like, hey, you know, we're at to kill a shark, I'm gonna get rich off of this too. You have no idea what it is I've been through. You have no idea what these things can do. And trust me, it's better off that you just assume the worst. Just the change and how he seems to be fighting every urge to break down and cry, it's amazing. And then we get to my second favorite scene, where they're all discussing tattoos and scars, led to leading into them singing Show Me the Way to Go Home, followed by Jaws breaking in. During that scene, it's pretty clear that both the actors and the characters are kind of awkward around each other. I can believe the actors were because they're like, we still don't know how to totally react to, you know, uh, to, to Shaw. But then by the end, you can tell they're all just having a great time. And the characters, it works because it's like the first time they've met. So, let's talk about the special effects. Yeah, I'm going to be honest here. The special effects are the one thing which have not held up that well. The shark is clearly fake. The scenes where you actually see it towards the end, it's kind of clear why they didn't want to show it throughout the entire thing. And in fact, it's pretty good they didn't. Because the shark looks very fake. You can clearly tell it turning left and right and opening its mouth. It looks fake. But it gets the job done. And expect, but the parts that you do only just see parts of, like the fin or the top of its head every now and then, look real and look quite intimidating. And when they blow up the shark at the end, they literally blew up the shark. They blew that entire prop sky high. Eight cameras filming, one take, they blew it up. Legitimately. And as for the other practical effects, such as the blood or the, like, the cuts or the missing limbs, they look pretty good, both by 70s standards and even by today's standards, they look pretty good. 
The effects might turn some people off as it does look pretty cheesy, but at the same time you gotta understand that this was made in the 70s, and it's held up this well for 40 something years. 48 I believe. Yeah, it's, no, 43 I believe was the number. Let me just check that again. Yeah, it's held up this well for 43 years, so I think we can all just kind of go ahead and give Jaws a little slack on that. You want to know what has held up for 43 years and is still as terrifying and awesome as it was back then? The theme song. We all know this theme song. The do 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 Like we know, we all know this theme song. It is one of the most famous theme songs ever composed. Second only to things such as Star Wars. Let me think. James Bond, possibly. Jaws. And the ironic thing is, a lot of them are made by John Williams. That man is one of the most talented composers who has ever lived. Next to, like, uh, up there with probably with Danny Elfman probably being number two. It is such a powerful and frightening score. And the funny thing is, when Spielberg first heard it, he thought Williams was joking. Yeah. Bet you regret making that joke, don't you, Will? Don't you, Spielberg? Anyhow. The movie is, the music still holds up phenomenally, and the camera work is still great. It actually is great at, like, the way they use lighting and they use just the water to try and hide the entire shark looks great. The lighting is all decent, a lot of it's mostly mostly practically lit, and that opening scene still kind of gives me the chills sometimes, because it's just complete, pretty much darkness as she's being attacked. It is scary, and it still is amazing. You guys, this movie won three Oscars. Best Sound, Best Film Editing, and it deserved this one. Best Music, Original Dramatic Score. It deserved that one. It was also nominated for Best Picture. I wonder what it lost to, actually. Let's look this up. Uh, do 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 Oscar winners. 1975. Uh, memorable moments. Best Picture. Oh, The Godfather Part 2. Okay, I'm totally fine with Jaws losing to The Godfather Part 2, because that movie, from what I've been told, is one of the best movies of all time. In fact, it's IMDb's number two best movie of all time. And Jaws is on that list, so I'm totally fine with it. You guys, I've been singing this movie's praises for nearly 20 minutes and maybe over that now, so what do you guys think? Can I recommend Jaws? Oh, yeah. You guys, on both entertainment and quality, Four raptor claws out of four. Wait, how do I normally do that? Three, four, whatever. Four raptor claws out of four, you guys. It is a phenomenal movie. I don't know about the sequels. I actually haven't seen them yet, but they're on my list. Uh, so you can expect reviews of them at some point. The movie is not as frightening as it once was. It is not going to like scare you away from the water as it once did. Because now, there have been so many parodies, remake style, sort of inspired by it. And everyone knows the story. But back then, this was revolutionary and this was pants-weddingly terrifying. And you know what, you guys? Jaws has stood the test of time for almost 50 years. And it is still a masterpiece of filmmaking. It is one of my favorite movies and will continue to be. And really, if you guys haven't seen it, you gotta go check it out. Even if you don't like the whole movie, you can't deny that the whole filmmaking world was revolutionized by this one movie. And think about it, if we didn't have Jaws, we wouldn't have things like Gremlins, Terminator, we wouldn't have some of the other best movies ever made. Avatar, no wait, that's, uh, that's James Cameron, my bad. E.T. My point is, this movie puts Spielberg on the map. Williams is already pretty well known, but this one shot him up to legendary status, along with Star Wars. So if you guys haven't seen it, I'm going to stop wasting your time. Go watch it right now. It's amazing. And until next time, you guys, thanks for tuning in to Jawsuary. Make sure you come back soon. And until next time, you guys, this is the Meteor Raptor saying keep cool, and I will see all you dino dudes around. Later.